Alright, so we've got the cover almost done. We've kind of sunk the holes. So I'm going to scuff this up a little bit. I'm just going to use a bit of uh, old wet and dry paper just to take that shine off the top of it. So that's dulling it up nicely. So like I did with the other cover, I've, uh, I've sanded this and taken the shine off it. I just prefer a, a matte look to these uh, control covers rather than the black shiny plastic. Okay, so both guitars now have a, uh, a neck attached and shaped. And we have uh, these tenons now that we need to shape down. So there's uh, the excess with the angle of the neck. Uh, of course causes the, uh, the end of the tenon to poke out so we need to shape that down so you couldn't really get much simpler than this jig what we do is we use a laminate trimmer and that's stuck down on there So we've got the bridge here and we've just got a little wooden shim and we've got the tuners in as well now. I mean that's apart from getting the neck angle right which is very important getting the bridge located in the uh, correct spot is uh, is the key to a guitar that will uh, we'll play in tune up and down the neck. So it has to be done correctly. 
So there's a, actually a really simple way that I do it, uh, and I've seen other people do it the same way. Well, it's pretty obvious that this is the uh, the offcut from the body. So I kept that, and this is just a cheap tail piece, and that's uh, screwed on here. And the idea is we're just going to run both E strings through here across the bridge which will not be fixed in position yet and into the tuners okay so this is the setup we're looking for we've got the uh, the two E strings traveling through here and over the top of our bridge and that bridge is totally movable forwards backwards we can uh, kick it back on the base side which we'll need to do on this bridge and we can also adjust it left and right for the strings bracing here it's pretty simple I've got that in the right position now and it was just a matter of going forwards and backwards uh, tuning it up bringing it to pitch and then uh, playing the uh, the 12th fret using a digital tuner so I've got a, uh, a punch that's just the right size to fit through Right, so I've gone ahead and I use my drill press to press the uh, the studs in. I will take them out though because we need to uh, I need to drill a ground wire through. Okay, so the only thing left to do is to mount the stop tail piece, and I'm just going to eyeball that. That's not that difficult. We've got a center line which is coming down here. Obviously I want the centre line to fall between the, uh, the two holes there. There we go. Okay, well that's uh, intonating correctly. Probably needs a, a fine adjustment, but I mean, we'll do that when we set the guitar up. But certainly, we're well within the range that we need to be. Okay, so I've loosened off the strings, and I've just got the uh, two outer E's relatively tight. And I can use the cover to, uh, to mark where I want the cavity to go. So I'm just looking for even spacing on the strings over the two uh, pole pieces, the two E's. So this is a setup for uh, routing the back P90 on an angle. So we've got the, uh, the template is propped up at the back with a shim. And if I put a straight edge down there, it runs parallel to the neck so we know that the uh, the angle of the template is the same as the neck Okay, so this camera angle will show you the reason that we uh, we angled the uh, routes for the pickups. You can see that they've uh, the pickups slope away on the same angle as the uh, neck and the strings, so it's just a much tidier look to the uh, the guitar and the pickups.
so this uh, sticky stuff comes off easy enough. It's just a matter of using a bit of acetone. It'll rub off after a few seconds. So I'm happy with the fit of that. Now I can actually uh, transfer this onto some thicker MDF. The reason I used a uh, quarter inch MDF to uh, shape the template is because it's thinner and it's easier to work. But it's still thick enough for me to be able to get a bearing onto it to, uh, to make a copy of this. So I'll make a copy of uh, this template now onto three quarter inch MDF. Alright, so we're now ready to actually make the pickguard for the guitar. And what I've decided to do is keep it similar to the uh, Junior pickguard in that it's a real chunky pickguard. Thicker than any uh, pickguard material you'd normally find. And uh, what I'm going to do is laminate white on the bottom and black on the top. And uh, I'll glue those together with uh, some super glue. So I'm just quickly scuffing up the two surfaces that are going to be glued together. Let's rough it up a little bit before we, uh, we put some glue on there. I find they tend to stick together better. They basically fuse together when they're super glued. Okay, so we've got our laminated uh, piece of pickguard material now, and we can trace the uh, pickguard onto here. So I've just bandsawed that roughly, and we can put the template on. Okay, this is about to get very messy. Alright, so I've gone around and I've uh, drilled the holes through for, uh, for the screws. And the last thing to do now is to just put a bevel just on this section here. And that'll just give us a nice reveal and it'll show the, uh, the white pickguard material underneath when the, uh, the pickguard's mounted on the guitar. Okay, so I'm not happy with that. I haven't revealed enough of the white. I've only just touched into the white layer there. So I'm just going to lift this bit up just a, a fraction and we'll just take another cut and we'll just try to reveal a bit more of the white. Okay, that's more of what I had in mind. We've cut down into the white layer now and we've got a, there's a nice reveal all the way around here. Alright, so I've peeled the plastic off the top and it's very shiny. So I can't uh, guarantee that I won't sand the top of that. But uh, that's what it looks like in place with the pickguard. So the pickguard fits well. Uh, I can put that aside. We can strip this guitar back, take all the hardware off it, give it a really good sand smooth over any sharp edges and get it ready for paint and this guitar is going to be a dog hair finish 
So that is uh, black. So we tape all the binding up. We spray the guitar black and then we come in with a, uh, a white grain filler and we fill all the pores with a white filler and then we spray some clear over the top. So you get this speckled effect. You get a black guitar with all of the, uh, the grain is all white. So it's, uh, it's a pretty unusual uh, finish but um, it looks pretty cool. So that's what we're doing on this guitar. Right, so we're going to drill the uh, ground wire. And we're going to use the bridge mounting hole. We're going to drill through there, and we're going to drill into the cavity that's in the uh, the back of the guitar. All right, so there's a hole going into our control cavity now, and I've actually just threaded a piece of wire in there, and I've just bent it over into the uh, into the hole here. That's the other end of it there. We'll deal with that later when we wire it up. That'll just get grounded onto a back of one of the pots. Now what we do is the uh, stud just gets pushed down onto that wire and uh, that's all we need to worry about. And just as we did before, I'm using the pickup cover as a, uh, as a template to, to mark the location for the, uh, the cavity. So I'm just aligning the strings, making sure everything's nice and even. I've got a, uh, a line across here, which uh, is where the pickup route ends. Okay, so you can see why it's so important that we angle the, uh, the pickup cavity to follow the same uh, path as the strings. It just looks odd with it sitting flat on the body. So I'm just about to put the template on and cut this cavity. And I want the, the front depth of this cavity to be about 5 millimetres. Okay, so you can see that the, uh, the pickup cover is in now. It's not screwed down, but it's just temporarily in place, just to check the angle and the angle looks good. Okay, nice and shiny. So you know what I'm about to do to that. So the Junior is a pretty basic rock and roll guitar. It's just a one pickup guitar. But what I've done is uh, when I wound the coil, I, uh, I put 9,000 winds on and then I tapped into the coil and then I put another 2,500 winds on after that. So with a push-pull switch here, we can tap into the pickup at 9,000 winds, which will give us uh, pretty much a vintage P90 sound. And if we pull that up, we, uh, we access the whole coil, which is 11,500 winds, which is a reasonably hot uh, P90. So we've got two pickups in one, realistically. We've got a, a vintage and we've got a hot P90. And uh, you just switch between the two with, uh, with a push-pull pot. The finish for this will be uh, pretty traditional. We're going to go with TV Yellow. That's uh, you know it's an old 50s Gibson uh, finish, which uh, was pretty popular on the uh, Les Paul Juniors. So we'll go with that, and uh, we'll see how it looks. All right, so both guitars are woodworking wise completed, uh, apart from a sand. They need a very good sand. So the hardware will get stripped off both of these guitars and I'll go over it with a fine tooth comb and I'll just sand any scratch marks out. Any blemishes will all be removed and they'll be prepped for spraying. So we'll cover that in the next video.